We're going to be palpating the muscle known as semitendinosus, which is one of your three hamstring muscles. So we're going to be talking about its origin towards its insertion. So I'm going to be starting up at, again, the origin. So I'm going to be sinking in just below the gluteal area and finding what is known as the ischial tuberosity of the ischium, which is right in this area. And then I'm going to fire off the hamstring's main function, which is going to be flexion of the knee. So I'm going to ask her to lift her leg here up. Good. There's a common attachment up at this location here where biceps femoris and semitendinosus are really kind of connecting together and originating at this ischial tuberosity, which is gonna make it extremely difficult for us to separate them. So for that very reason, I'm actually gonna be going down towards the insertion, finding that, and then working my way back up towards the origin because it's gonna be easier to split the hamstrings apart once I can identify where tendinosis is. So tendinosis has a very nice, obvious tendon for us to find. So just above the knee, if you place your fingers flat and you ask a person to give some resistance into knee flexion, this is gonna be a very easy to find and identify tendon, which kind of helps with its name semitendinosis. So you have a nice round, thin tendon. And what you can see right here is there's almost a subtle groove in the tissue. So semitendinosis, its insertion is actually on the anterior tibia. So I'm cross fibering and strumming. And this tendon is wrapping around towards the front of the leg into a landmark known as the pes anserine. Now I'm going to show a different reference point here. So we're looking at the tibia from a slightly different angle, but if I slid up that anterior border, this is our tibial tuberosity right here. If I follow that superior and medial, this is our condyle. And just below the condyle on the medial surface, there's three muscles attaching in this area. And those are semitendinosus, gracilis and sartorius. So semitendinosus is going to be attaching just in this area here. Again, I'm going to have her hold her own leg up for me and I'm going to follow that tendon around the posterior aspect of the leg into this insertion here. Sometimes people refer to it as PAM or the proximal anterior medial shaft of the tibia or again the pes anserine insertion site. Okay, let's go back to our tendon. I've identified our tendon again. Don't strum it too aggressively, but you are gonna wanna follow it up. And since it is tendon for quite a bit of the more distal half of this muscle, you're gonna go tendon, 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 working your way up until it finally starts turning into more of a muscle belly, which I'm starting to feel that musculotendinous junction in this area here. So as we switch over, from tendon into muscle belly. I'm gonna ask for some resistance. Good, and now I'm gonna to try to grasp and follow the muscle up. So trying to stay off of biceps femoris, which is on more of the lateral aspect. I'm gonna follow up as best I can, sticking to semi-tendinosis. And then as I said previously, as we get really close towards the top, it's gonna to blend with biceps femoris as they both are attaching here on that ischial tuberosity. So this is the origin of the ischium and the pes ring was the insertion at the bottom part. Again, just as a reminder, it's doing a lot of flexion at the knee, but it also can do some extension of the acetabulofemoral joint. So that's gonna conclude our palpation today for semitendinosis.